Catching Freedom is certainly one of the more prominent three-year-olds this year and, and has that classic progression that we always love to see. This horse is, just seems to be getting better with every single race from the mental perspective as well as the physical. I was trained by Al, uh, Brad Cox with Flavian Pratt aboard. That was the same combination as well as the owners, all about family stables for Angel of Empire, who was another one who had a great uh, steady progression and it started with the Smarty Jones um, and uh, uh, that gallop out for uh, uh, Angel of Empire really got us on the trail of watching them. And we were rewarded for it in the Risen Star. And Catching Freedom is very similar. I think he's a little greener or has been uh, in some of his earlier starts. But uh, the Louisiana Derby, he really put it all together. So this is certainly a horse that we have to take seriously. Now, you look at the pedigree, and you see he's by constitution and a pioneer of the Nile mare underneath, so stamina is not going to be a problem. Uh, that's a catch my drift is a black type mare, uh, and so, um, and, and she's, uh, she's done pretty well for herself. So, this is all looks pretty good. Now, uh, the, the alarmist might say, well, a dosage index of 5.67 is a little scary. Well, that's true, but uh, again, it's not as accurate as it could be because we don't update the chefs to race. So I'm not worried about it. There's plenty of stamina underneath, and you can see uh, the pedigree is pretty well balanced for the for the mayor on the conduit mayor profile. So uh, all systems are go here. Constitution uh, has certainly sired a lot of good two turn horses and uh, is by Tappet. So again, not to worry. Now, we'll take a look here, and there's quite a few foreigners ahead of these for Constitution's get, but I wanted to include the Americans so we do have a frame of reference. Tis the Law, of course, won the Belmont when it was around one turn and uh, was the leading three-year-old uh, for most of the year prior to Authentic getting going. Um, and you see uh, American Revolution, Web Slinger on the turf, uh, Independence Hall, Law Professor, uh, these are all horses who can get two turns and um, have been prominent. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot to like here, pedigree-wise. Um, you see, and if you go to the uh, Catch the Drifts uh, get, you see Bishop's Bay right off the top. And Bishop's Bay beat first mission last year at three years old in the Maiden um, and was a pretty prominent horse. Hasn't raced a whole lot, but uh, hopefully we'll get to see it for. And then Strava who's a uh, very competitive sprinter miler, uh, kind of that grade three ungraded stakes type of horse. But so there's some, uh, there's some pretty good get out of this, uh, out of Catch My Drift. So again, pedigree, I think it catch, Catching Freedom passes. Now we're going to take a look at the race replays, and we're going to look at all the significant races for Catching Freedom. It starts with the Smarty Jones at Oaklawn, and then we'll follow with the Risen Star and the Louisiana Derby, both at Fairgrounds. So let's see what happened here. I think it really, really need to zero in for uh, Catching Freedom, particularly uh, watching these race progressions. And you see he's in the two-hole. One got away pretty well. And lingering at the back. Now, he had had an allowance race before this where he ran into all kinds of trouble getting uh, covered up. And that's why we started watching him, because it looked like he was going to run a big one next time. So that was something that we wanted to keep keep an eye on here and you see they get keeping him out of trouble on the rails saving ground just uh, lingering at the back Mo winning, tugging a little bit behind the speed. The jockey trying to get him to relax. He's been passed by informed Patriot on the inside. He's just saving Fidget plenty of ground here. Now the question is, can he black. work out a trip? Four lengths off the lead, a length and a half better than catching freedom. Chaperone and Gettysburg address after getting squeezed at the break is last as they approach the far turn run. Joel Rosario lets Loganos open up a little see, bit. See, now here. can he, he get it? Can he out. find his way He's through? That's the, the that's the issue. And a half. Mystic Dan and the second spot Jess Steele is still third but he's getting closer now Mystic Dan only a neck behind Loganos who's still in front Mystic Just Steele was looking pretty good here Jess I thought Steele is three wide and four and so now he's right worked he swung him out he's in, gonna get to the, in the clear he's being pumped upon to get going but swings to the extreme outside as they come off the turn Mystic Dan Jess Steele is right he's got there to plenty tackle. of horse catching freedom on the far outside and form taking a little, a little stubborn to 
to change leads there. You see, he doesn't. Uh, so again, some greenness, but plenty of plenty of speed. With authority, so pretty uh, pretty good race. So now let's have a look at the Risen Star, and we uh, this one's important mainly because there was a slow pace. Uh, you did see the return of Sierra Leone, and it was in the mud. So there were a couple extra factors here uh, from the Smarty Jones. And, and really what we want to see is catching freedom. We want to see if they, uh, the maturity. We want to see this one getting uh, a little more comfortable racing. Going for an early bid as they and you make see the he's in the eight hole and a little more forwardly placed, Phantom, which uh, you always like to see. That's Hall always, to me, a mark of a horse who's getting better and starting to figure it out. Saving ground is also Ruta. You With you on the outside, three wide, saving uh, uh, a little bit of ground, not much. But saving ground is real men violin as they go to the back. And he's got a better position than Sierra Leone. And settles in the Navy Silks, three clear from Moonlight, who's next. Well, four clear from and it was important to be a little inside. closer, of course, Honor, because Marine, track Phantom slowed things Indy. down to a That's crawl, and really nobody nobody bothered him on the front end. Twenty four point thirty two seconds with Joel Rosario. It's Track Phantom who made the top, so Track Phantom leads them to a half mile from home in the Risen Star Stakes. From right there toward the inside, Cardinal with resilience up close. And then comes resilience who uh, of built fame. off this race Real for the Wood Memorial. The It'll be interesting outside, to take a look at. Dancer. Be dancer wide both turns. Awesome Bruto with Chasing Freedom Sierra Leone. Moonlight, Honor Marie. The trailer remains Tinsy Indy. Half mile for Track Phantom. 49.67 seconds as they round the far turn. It's Track Phantom. Again, Track he's, Phantom he's, uh, to hold he's taking kickback. You got to like that. I mean, that's one thing you'll have to like to see, particularly in the mud. Awesome and he's going to swing him out here. Four wide. Be dancer. Real men. Violin toward the inside as they turn for home after three quarters in one minute, 14 point seventy four seconds. Track Still reluctant Phantom to change leads. You can see that. He's all over the place. Out. Chasing freedom, trying to keep a straight path and Sierra Leone charging hard on the outside it's and it really kind of cost him here because he just uh, didn't get that little horses. break that horses Sierra get Leone when they the change leads and Leone, you know by the Leone. time he straightens out Sierra it's too Leone, late Trent, Sierra Leone Trent catches him down. but uh, he Chasing did run a solid effort against uh, upgrading uh, company so there's a lot of positives to take from this race but still needs maturity so now we're going to take it to Louisiana Derby. And the big thing is we want to see if uh, Catching Freedom has matured as a horse. Going into the Derby, if he was still really green, it would make him awful hard to back despite the talent. So let's see if he Fire can put it all together his here. From the open. And he barely hit the front of the gate yet. And you see there were some issues early on with Antiquarian. So this horse only has two um, stars who did underneath the belt. Come they back can to be, run, but, you know, uh, triggered by anything. I mean, Jerry, just put us into the jockey's perspective there. Not a great sign. Alaska's his mind as he has to, if they allow this horse to run, get back aboard. It's never a good sign because the horses are keyed up in his mind. It's going to be hard to get him to relax in the race. Um, but he's going to give it a go. And he's probably excited that he's not the one that has to run. <laughs> 12 horse just left to load. That is your lukewarm favorite track phantom with Joel Rosario. We're set. It's See, Louisiana track phantom, Derby. Here's leader John on the G. outside and Here we go. didn't bother game. him and he got right to where he needed. But he was pressed this and time and there was a little off. more the uh, pace oh, than there had been in the Risen Star. And, also Ruta who's trying to and, and this was uh, more doom for track phantom is that they the finally got a little bit of pressure on him. But for Joel Rosario to take the early lead as they head toward the first turn. Track Phantom See, catching merged freedom. in front of Hall of Fame with common defense Rating right there. The also in fourth, Antiquarian in fifth, and Tuscan Gold is sixth. And that's a little quicker the uh, early fraction than uh, one, Track Phantom had been running at. So you can see the horses are up on his throat line, as these leaders giving him a little more pressure. Track. Certainly Lionel that was the way to beat him. Hangett Road, who settled with the rail, and Catching Freedom has dropped back to being 11th and last. The opening quarter covered in 23.4. Now, I will say I would have liked to have seen him up a little closer. Uh, to the catch the freedom, that is, to the pace, because that would tell me that this horse is getting more, to become more of a horse who can rate, as opposed to one who always has to close. But you see catching freedom at 48, trying to slow things down as best he can, but he really just doesn't 
uh, just doesn't have the opportunity to settle as well as he did before. You see catching freedom, saving all the ground on the rail. Moderate to slow at 112. So the pace is a little slow, so catching freedom's going to have some work to do. And now he's starting to roll. It's Trek Phantom and Common Defense. They're a neck Look apart. Look at that big acceleration forward, right there when he's swept out. Gold. Then toward the inside, also Ruta. Now he's in full, the rail. full flight. Still, you see a little bit of bob in there, but not quite as much as had been in the Risen Star. And now it's just a question of uh, if he's good enough. And probably ran a mile and a quarter or more in this race because it's at a mile and 316 being that wide. But plenty of horse. Drove out very nicely. I thought Anna Marie was a great race as well. I'm really excited to take a look at that one coming in. But uh, see, put it all together and uh, a good, solid driving effort against uh, moderate pace, I'd say. I don't say slow, but moderate. So uh, I think this horse is definitely one that's uh, on the improve. He doesn't train real well, but he usually runs well. That's one uh, thing you have to worry a little bit about right there is that they slowed him right up and he didn't gallop out. Um, you always want to see the horses gallop out at the end of the race. So that's something that we maybe want to keep an eye on for the course of the training. But... I'll say this, right? You know, this right the there, that great acceleration. Race, I mean, that was uh, really this what you want to see. Slowest running time, 156.16, and it's been a pretty fast and he track just, uh, today you know, at the fairground. So I don't really know how strong this race is going to turn out. Still a little bit, credit. you know, back and forth. I mean, but, catching freedom. We said he was only um, beating a length and three quarters in the Risen Star, and he was battling it out in the run of the wire. And uh, drove out really that nicely. Fast, and he was last at one point early. I just that gallop out, though. Track I, Phantom. I, we're going to really keep an eye on that. That's just not good in the middle at all. Race, which is trainer Steve so that's a, to me, that's no a bit of a black mark. But all month. in all, Hall put it all together. So now let's take a look at our pace study of the derby preps that we just watched. And so we've got, we'll start with the Smarty Jones, the Risen Star, and then the Louisiana Derby. And for very quickly, 1FR, 2FR, 3FR, those are the first, second, and third pace calls for each of these races. And the bottom numbers are early pace. That's the second call. These will all be, those will be based on the Louisiana Derby. So you see the 2FR is the EP. And then the average pace is the average of the EP and the SP. SP is sustained pace. That's the second and third calls averaged. So that gives you an idea of how a horse is carrying his speed. And of course, average pace is how he's uh, running throughout. Generally, um, and I've mentioned this for my first couple of uh, postings for Sierra Leone and Fierceness, and I don't want to have to do it every time and bore you, but just to know, the AP and the SP, any horse who leads in both of those categories, uh, in the Kentucky Derby field, usually wins the race. So very some, something to really keep an eye on. Now we'll look at the Smarty Jones to start, and this is pretty much what a um, a mile and a sixteenth race would look like uh, for a horse who's up near the leaders and finishing out. Um, and so you see the pace getting progressively slower. Uh, this is always the case with uh, with horses. You know they decelerate. Uh, as they run across, uh, run along a race. It's, so the horse who wins is not the fastest, it's the one who decelerates the slowest. Um, so uh, we, we know from that race, Catching Freedom still, um, you know, had a little bit of greenness, a little reluctance to change leads, and that's certainly going to impact the pace numbers, but he did run a solid race. But if you had calculated the pace numbers off of that race, it wouldn't give you cause you might not get terribly excited about him moving forward. So it was more visual and the way he ran. So let's take a look at the Risen Star. And now we see a horse who's lingering at the back, and you see the F, the first call, is markedly slower than the Smarty Jones. But then he makes a middle move at the second call, and that's when usually closes start to run. 53.9 and then closes out with a solid third fraction so he was able to keep running for an extended period of time and with a 53.13 and again as i've mentioned anything over 53 going into the derby is very positive uh, so definitely a big improvement over the smarty jones running towards the rear into uh 
were, were pretty slow fractions um, and was, as we know, was pretty green in that race. So, uh, but he still improved his, uh, his numbers. So this is a horse is on his way up. So we get to the Louisiana Derby, and again, the, the, the fractions weren't quite as slow as they were in the Risen Star, but you see um, he's getting a little closer early on, 52.79. But as we saw in that race, he was at the back of the pack. Now here's where there was a big difference. He made a really big middle move, 55.43. That's, that's really moving. And that's um, you see, over the course of the three races, his two FR is getting better with each race. And most importantly, look at that third fraction. 51.66, 53.13, 54.56, and that's at a mile and a three sixteenths. That's outstanding closing. That's, I mean, I can't stress that enough. When you see a horse with over 54 at that distance, that's a horse who's really moving. What's particularly encouraging is the second call improvement as well. So uh, we, and we don't see where the first call is decreasing. It's actually improving. So this is a horse who's showing the classic progression and is getting steadily better. So from a pace perspective, he checks all the boxes, and you'd have to be really excited about catching freedom going into the Derby. And in many respects, he's looking better than some of the other top three-year-olds. And uh, this is the kind of thing that comes up to four when you start taking a look at him from a pace perspective and not just the visual. Uh, and so from a pace perspective, you've got to really like catching freedom. So in some, we, we think about the issues we have with catching freedom. And of course, maturity is still going to be there. And the, the main thing is, uh, in, why I put Derby Day down here is, how is he going to react with a huge crowd, you know, all these side uh, issues with the Derby and distractions and whatnot uh, for a horse who may, looks to have put it together to a degree. But still in the Louisiana Derby, you saw a little bit moving in and out. So it's not completely gone. So that's that that's an issue to, to think about. And of course, working out a trip for a late runner is going to be the issue. And we'll have to see how the post looks and what the race shape ultimately turns out to be. Uh, but Overall, Catching Freedom looks awful good. You know, even though he's got the maturity issues, he is getting better and he's getting markedly better. Um, and I really liked what I saw when I deep dive in this horse and I'm going to upgrade him for sure. Uh, as uh, you know, I think this is a, a solid horse to win the Derby at this point. And I may give him a little bit of an edge because his issues uh, maybe aren't as pronounced as fierceness and his progression looks better than Sierra Leone's. So, and I think that's saying something. So, catching freedom, a horse that definitely, from doing our deep dive, we want to upgrade on our uh, on our Derby list.